Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is an early sneak peek of generative AI to video using Adobe Firefly. I was invited with a group of other people to have a look at the early uh, beta of Firefly using text to video. And some of the results I find just startling. I'm gonna show you my results, some of the things I think are great, some of the things that they need to, to work on. And I'll put links in the description, including this blog post. So this has been out for a little while and it includes some examples like that. That's completely Firefly right there. Um, some other examples here. You can have a look at them in the link. I really love it for landscapes. Anyway, all the way down here at the bottom is a link for you to join the wait list. Once you're accepted into the program, you can start generating video. And there are a few restrictions now. Resolution isn't what you would expect. These aren't giant 4K videos and they're very, very short. But of course this is AI. So it's changing all the time. So much so that when you're, all of us that are in this beta, whenever we're talking to Adobe about what we're generating, the first question they have is, when did you do this? Why? Well, because last week was one thing, this week is another. That's how fast these changes are. This isn't the wait a year for Photoshop update. This stuff is changing minute by minute. So let's have a look at the interface. This is where your video will be generated. Your prompt is down here. You can upload a reference image. You can't change some of these things. So this you can't change. It's using the uh, Firefly model widescreen 24 frames a second. You can change the shot size, close up, extreme, close up, medium, long and extreme. You can change the angle from an aerial shot to low angles, and you can add a bit of motion. If you don't, your camera sometimes will move anyway, but you can add things like zooming in and zooming out. One thing Adobe has to change is a lot of these camera movements are way too fast. It's, a lot of times you want a, a slow push in, just a, a slight one, not a dramatic all the way in, but that's another thing. So you type your prompt down here and I'm just going to right off the top of my head, a bowling ball falling on a uh, wine glass on a metal table. Um, in a reflective, whoops, room. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for uh, spell checking. Um, and yeah, let's just try that. I have no idea why I came up with that, but uh, you can be as intricate as you want. Uh, some of the examples in that blog post will show you, it's almost a paragraph in some of them describing the lighting, the atmosphere, and how all of that goes. This does take uh, um, a few seconds and it generates it. Now, the whole time I'm on here um, and I'm doing this, you'll see every video show up. When, it, when you close your browser, all of those videos that you generated will be gone. Of course, you can download them, which I have done in all the examples I'll show you in just a second. And there's a little uh, progress going on down here and we'll see what it, it looks like. And All right, <laughs> it's in a bowling alley. I didn't say that, but let's play this video and, oh. <laughs> All right, it didn't break the glass. I didn't tell it to break the glass. It just falls on the glass. So maybe if I told it to break the glass. Now, one last thing down here in the advanced settings is the seed. Now, trying to get things to, to generate uh, randomly in computers is not as easy as you think. And a lot of times behind the scenes, programmers will add something like a seed. You've seen this in Photoshop, I mean, sorry, in uh, After Effects all the time. And that seed is just another reference number that the calculation will use. So you can just 
copy and paste the same seed if you want the same scene or something completely different. Um, and that's what I've done in a lot of mine. So let's go have a look in um, Premiere Pro. I brought in a whole bunch of videos that uh, I generated. And the first one is the first attempt. So uh, this was an aerial shot and uh, I mentioned I want reflective water and a boat going across. Now, uh, I can't just have pictures. So I've added sound to a lot of these just to increase the realism. Now you can see that the water is not perfect. Uh, this is not as high quality uh, yet, but this could be great for specking something out, for brainstorming, ideation, you're just trying some things. Now this was done several weeks ago. This next one was done yesterday, and this one blows me away. All except for the hand that comes up there at the end. But look at the lighting and look at how accurate it's falling, not only on the side of her face and the, and the wrinkles, but in these wispy hairs too, where it's collecting all of that light. If you've done any work in 3D, lighting and compositing is the most difficult thing for realism. And you can create a model, but trying to make that model look real is not easy. And Firefly, and Photoshop's AI generation, all of that does a really good job of the compositing parts of things. So I loved that. Next up is this cat, which looks pretty darn good. And I didn't try to do that camera move, but to me, that's typical of what would happen if you're sitting on your couch and you grab your smartphone and you're taking a video of your pet and they come too close. They're not scripted. So all of a sudden you've got this closeness of the animal. I thought that was kind of real. Uh, next one is this house inside. Oop. And let me just share what I so for that one, I said interior living room, mid-century decor, sunlight is pouring through the window, dust particles are dancing in the light. And I think it did a great job of that. Next up is this kitchen, which again, it does a pretty good job. Straight lines are a little warpy. Uh, Firefly still has a problem with that. All the compositing just looks really beautiful. And here's a, a very atmospheric alleyway scene. Now she, her face doesn't look good, but look at her movement where she slightly stumbles, but, but she dances just a just the way that you would expect a young girl to dance. I think that's impressive. Getting the details right, that's like adding RAM and, and, uh, and disks, disk size, which we all know was small and now it's huge. So the details are coming. To me, what is the realism for the stuff I like to do, which is very realistic? Is she moving in a realistic way? Absolutely, that's very realistic. Now you can also use text. So here's an example of uh, fireworks that end up saying happy birthday. It's kind of unusual because how are the, w the words floating in there, but at least it did the job. Next up, it didn't line up very well, but this is drawing a heart on a window. And what I found impressive was that little drip at the bottom. Down in here, look at that little drip. Boop, pretty good. A nice chessboard. Some of the movement on all those pieces of that, it looks like a pawn in the wrong spot. Some of these are overlapping, but uh, I had that on a, on a yacht on a metal table. Looks pretty good. Now the next one, I grew up in the 70s, so this room is a room I grew up in. 
incense, big, huge speakers, and beanbag chairs. So I wanted the incense just to do that, that lazy kind of, of smoke. It started out pretty good, and then it went kind of... <laughs> that was weird. So for that one, um, I said a room in the 70s with soft beanbag chairs, dimly lit, a hi-fi turntable, large stereo speakers. There's a round table in the middle of the room with a small incense decanter and a stick of incense burning and sending a trail of smoke upwards. So maybe the word sending, um, I needed to be more clear, slowly moving, whatever. And it decided to put a, a record on that round table that's spinning around, which is kind of unusual. All right. Now, next up, um, for this one, I said, a wide shot of a field with tall blowing grass, trees and low mountains in the distance. Light rain is falling, storm clouds are gathering in the sky. And you'll notice that, that I've, I've added it a few more times because I changed how it looks, but I kept the seed the same. And in this example, I've got four of them. They're a little bit uh, dreamy, so not as uh, accurate as I'd want, but you can see they are similar. The hiker does not look good at all. It looks more like he's on a scooter. And what I did here is the last frame of this video and the first frame, I exported out the last frame of the generated uh, video, brought that back into uh, the Firefly as my first image and then generated from that because I wanted to get a, a pan up and extend that shot, but it is a little abrupt. So if we watch the transition between the two, you can definitely see where that comes up. But again, look at the compositing. Look at these great shafts of light coming out on there. That is really beautiful. Okay, next up, um, I, I, this prompt was, I wanted ants to build a tower out of small rocks. Small rocks? Well, small to humans, but pretty big to ants. I mean, look at the compositing. We've got shadows happening here. The lighting is reflecting off their bodies. So that's pretty good. They are definitely wonky. Um, the detail is not there. So I thought, well, if it's not gonna understand small, tiny rocks, how about breadcrumbs? Imagine ants at a picnic and they're building a, a tower out of breadcrumbs. Well, it thought, <laughs> slices of bread. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, Whatever. Now, next up, I wanted to show one of the camera movements of the handheld. So this is a postman delivering a letter, which you'll see has a funny ending to it. But watch the handheld camera movement. It really is quite good. That is a nice camera angle. Handheld, but he, <laughs> watch him deliver the letter. Uh, uh, uh. The slot's right there, buddy. So in that case, we're getting a little bit uh, hallucinogenic. All right, next up, I wanted a serene sky. I wanted very little subject matter. I wanted a sky, but I wanted a plane, just a little plane in the distance. My problem was I, I used the word Cessna, and to me, a Cessna plane is a small plane, but of course, later I realized Cessnas also make Lear jets, so, or not Lear jets, but jets. So I wondered why I had those trails going on in there. Well, it's a jet, it's a Cessna jet, and you see that little artifact that shows up. So I tried to fix that, and then the next one turned out like that. What? Yeah, that, <laughs> that. Uh, so then I said, oh, a propeller plane. And then I got that. 
So this brings us to hallucinations. And what I like to show is this guy here hallucinating. And yes, I use Firefly for that. So hallucinations, it's widely known. This is part of the problem with any AI generated stuff. So um, th that sky and that plane to me is an example of cut your losses. I know some people have said they make 20, 50 iterations until they get it right. But to me, I would bail on that. I would get rid of that and try a different uh, prompt. So in keeping with that um, hallucination, we'll have a look at this guy. And you know that the smoke looks good. The meat's a little stiff. Um, and I don't know what he's picking at there. He's kind of like grabbing the meat and putting it back. You should wait till it's done. But what I like about this is the parallax going on between the the uh, uh, the grill here and the house, the beautiful lawn, and that all looks good. And and the the uh, compositing. He looks a little bit plastic. This was done about three weeks ago, and the model has updated uh, since then. Now for this one, I wanted to test it. So I in, in, in the previous one, I just used the term man and it, it made a Caucasian man. And in this one, I said, well, give me a Middle Eastern piano virtuoso with a handlebar mustache. Now, before I play it, look at all the intricate detail here and the way the light is falling on it. It's, it's way too ripply and weird, but I love the lighting. Now here we go and here's our virtuoso playing. And for some reason we got, we got a guy trying to imitate him in the back, which again is a little bit of a hallucination. All right. Next up, I wanted to create a picnic of a thousand people and I wanted to have a picnic in the middle and I wanted it to uh, have a desert beyond that. Anyway, this is what it did. Completely unusable, very weird. Nobody looks real. Uh, the only thing that looks good is the, is the stuff in the distance, really. Next up, I wanted someone eating a hamburger, skydiving, eating a hamburger, and drinking a beer from a beer stein. I thought, you got two hands, why wouldn't it put a hamburger in one hand and a beer stein in another and eat and drink? But apparently it stuck the hamburger in the beer stein and that's what you're seeing right here. So that's crazy, but look at the motion. That's the kind of motion you get from someone uh, moving around and trying to shoot a video of someone in the air. Uh, next up, this is a beautiful picture of my wife when she was a little girl. The original had this, this pattern on it. The original was black and white. I used Photoshop to colorize this, brought it in, and it didn't do well. Well, let's have a look. All of a sudden, new hands appear, and that's what it looks like. So a little bit weird but still interesting. Okay, now, the, now I took the uh, current image of me and this is what it did to me. I sent that to my daughter and she just, she freaked out. Okay, next up, this is a still image. Uh, this is when I used to work at Adobe and we we're all with Jay Leno at uh, The Tonight Show in um, LA. And we got this picture of all of us together. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to see what it does and I just, I think the prompt was posing for the camera. Well, that's it. So it went from that to that. And now I lose weight and uh, I'm much younger. And Jay, none of us look anything like we really are. So that's weird. Uh, next up was I tried to have beach balls coming out of a car uh, as it drove along Venice Beach. And again, it's a little bit uh, psycho, but this was a, a few weeks ago. Tigers in a jungle. They definitely look weird. The color's great, but just so you know, some of the things you do are going to be a little weird. 
So there's a quick look at, at some of the stuff I've been doing. The, like I said, go on the, the wait list right now and you'll be brought into the beta. This is only going to get better. And, the, and you can feel free that anything you generate from Adobe is going to be fine. It's not stealing artists work it's only you it's not used on yours so even though i upload an image and i generate that that goes in into a, a a temporary queue and gets deleted so none of this stuff is kept or trained on the ai the ai is trained on adobe stock which users get paid for and uh also stuff that isn't copyrighted that is available. I've, I'll put a link at the, in the end and in the description uh, about Adobe's terms and conditions, which so many people got wrong. So you can feel good that if you generate stuff now and in the future, no one's gonna take it down. You'll, you won't get a notice at, at some point that says, hey, uh, you're using something that whoever the, the company was that created this, they generated this um, by ripping off other artists, which is not what we want to do. We want to support all of the artists as Adobe does, we want to protect um, all of the copyrighted uh, work out there, which Adobe does, and it doesn't take your art and uh, doesn't take your generated stuff. Uh, whether it's Firefly images or, or the, the video, it does not use that for training. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that at videoreveal.com slash shop. And there you can donate once or monthly, uh, any amount. We love all of our wonderful donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to give you an early peek of the cool stuff that's out there that's coming down for you to use real soon.